so we have seen time scaling in discrete domain now we will take a look at continuous time time scaling now let's say this is our signal x of t we can define a time scaled version of x of t as y of t equal to x of a t let's consider two cases one where a is greater than 1 and the second case when a is between 1 and 0 so let's consider first case that is let's say a equal to 2 that means y of t is equal to x of 2t now we have x of t here what we need is x of 2t now we have seen in an earlier example that when a is greater than 1 like in this case where a is 2 the signal will get compressed by half now we need to find how the plot of y of t that is x of 2 t will look like we have given x of t now we may follow the similar approach what we have done for discrete time signal that means we can calculate y of 0 that will be same as x of 2 into 0 that is x of 0 say we can calculate y of 0 0.5 which is x of 1 and so on now this is not an easy approach because we are having infinite number of samples now the best approach is to look for points where we have transitions so this is one point and we will select all the points where we have some kind of visible transitions so we have this y of 0 which is obviously x of 0 that is equal to 6 so we don't have to worry about it now let's say we have to find where this point comes in x of 2t so that should be at 5 by 2 that is 2.5 so it has to be at 10 by 2 that is 5 similarly this point will come at minus 2.5 in our new signal and this point will be at minus 10 by 2 that is minus 5 so here we have our x of t and this is y of t that is x of 2t so this x of 0 and y of 0 are same and here we have x of 5 so x of 5 this point should come at x of 2.5 this is x of 10 and it should come at x of 5 and an even faster solution to plot y of t from x of t is let me remove this just divide the independent variable by that means here this point will be minus 2.5 this will be minus 5 this will be 2.5 and similarly you just have to divide all these by 2 now we can see essentially we have the same signal on the top and at the bottom now these two plots are same except that we use a different scale for the time axis here we have marked one unit apart and here we have done it at 0.5 so both the signals are same so if you are given x of t and you want to find x of 2t just divide the independent variable by 2. Now we will discuss more about this when solving problems. Let's go ahead and see the second case where the value of a is between 0 and 1. Now let's consider this signal x of t and let's say y of t equal to x of t by 2. So here a is 1 by 2 now in this case the signal should expand let's see the plot of y of t so this is x of t and here we have x of t by 2 so x of 0 is same as y of 0 x of 5 became y of 10 and x of 2.5 became y of 5 and so on now similar to the previous case the easiest way to see how the time scaled version will look like is to multiply the independent variable by 2 in this case so this point will be 2 this will be 4 this will be 6 8 10 and so on here it will be minus 2 minus 4 minus 6 minus 8 minus 10 and so on now both these signals are same except that we use different scales now time scaling does affect the frequency component of the signal now we will use audacity to see an example First, 
I will generate a tone. I will select sine wave of frequency 1000 Hz and let's say an amplitude of 0.5. Click OK. Now you can see the sine wave in timeline. Let me zoom in to show that it's actually a sine wave. So here you can see the sine wave. Let me zoom out. Now I'll go to edit. Click duplicate. Now I'll select the second track. Go to effect and we'll go to change speed, which will actually do time scaling. Now I have selected the multiplier to be two. That is equivalent to doing X of two T. I'll click OK. Now you can see the original video duration was five seconds. Now it's only 2.5 seconds. Let's zoom in. Now I have selected one cycle of the waveform. The original audio was 1000 Hz. That means this is one cycle that is 1000 Hz. Now we can see at the same interval. Now we have two cycles. That means there should be some change in frequency. That means the frequency of the newly created signal will be twice that of the original signal. So time scaling does affect the frequency content of the signal. So let's select the first track, go to analyze and we can see a peak at around 1000 Hz. Let me close this, select the second track, go to analyze, click plot spectrum. So we can see now the peak is at 2000 Hz. So during time scaling, the frequency also changes. So let's delete this track here. We'll take our original track. We'll duplicate it again. Now we'll go to effect change speed. Instead of two, let's put 0.5 here. Here you can see the current length is five seconds and after it will be 10 seconds. Click OK. So you can see we have this waveform here. Now if we zoom in, we can observe that there should be some reduction of frequency in our newly created signal. So let's select our original signal. We have already seen its frequency is 1000 Hz. Let's close this, select the second track. Let's go to plot spectrum. Now you can see its frequency has changed to 500 Hz.